Matthew Heister. From blood to brain. Derivation of patient-specific neural stem cells from blood and other human tissues. So, until 2030, we'll see an increase of old and elderly people by more than 200%. This increase will be paralleled by also a big increase in uh, age-related diseases, such as uh, neurodegenerative diseases, and therefore um, this holds a great challenge to all fields of medicine and our society as a whole. So, how can we tackle this challenge? One idea that was brought up by um, artists already centuries ago uh, is the idea of the fountain of youth. Though this concept is really appealing, I think it will remain a myth. Still, scientists have discovered that we actually have an intrinsic source of youth, and that is stem cells. Yet, when it comes to the brain, we only have a really limited uh, amount of stem cells, and they are also really restricted in their potential. So, what I would like to propose today is a new approach to actually induce new um, patient-specific stem cells that hold a great, great uh, potential from human tissue. And how do we do that? So, we start from cells of our patient, like blood cells or uh, fibroblasts from the skin. We treat them with a combination of neural-specific factors and molecules. And then a process that takes around 10 to 14 days, we see that our cells actually change their identity and finally get into the neural uh, fate and start proliferating, meaning they are uh, induced neural stem cells. Importantly, these induced neural stem cells are different to ear cell derived stem cells in that respect that you have lower risk to induce other tissue which might form tumors in your patient and they also can proliferate indefinite. Moreover, if you compare them to primary neural tissue, you see that they are really early in development and show a neural border-like identity. This means that these cells have still the potential to uh, develop both into the central nervous system and in the peripheral nervous system. And you see this nicely recapitulated also in vitro by formation of neural tube-like structures, migratory crest, and eventually um, also mature progeny like dopaminergic neurons, motor neurons, astrocytes, or dendrocytes, and when it comes to the crest, sensory neurons, cartilage, <coughs> and So, taken together, I think we have now a really nice tool for personalized medicine, for drug screening and uh, uh, toxicity testing, and also for disease modeling, either by reprogramming uh, diseased patients or by um, modifying our cells with the CRISPR-Cas technology, and maybe this opens up uh, new uh, also options for therapies. With this, I come to the end, and I hope I convinced you that we have a little fountain of use also in the DKF that, and thanks for your attention.